This is a 3D look at Elkins Airport in West Virginia. Nestled in the mountains, there are terrain considerations for departing here under IFR, and in fact, the airport's one departure procedure only allows for departures using runway 23, shown here with a more generally clear path in the valley. We're going to examine the departure procedure, the Elkins 1, using our video quiz format you might have seen previously. We'll ask five multiple choice questions on this procedure and give you some time to work out the answer before it's revealed. Question one. The ceilings are 500 feet AGL and the visibility is four miles. What's the minimum climb gradient you should use? Stick to the procedure requirements even if you assume that this is a part 91 flight. Is it 340 feet per nautical mile, 490 feet per nautical mile, 490 feet per minute, or 200 feet per nautical mile? We'll put up a timer and give you a few seconds. It's 490 feet per nautical mile. Have a look at the takeoff minimums. First, for runway 23, the only runway we can use, it says that the ceiling and visibility mins are 700 feet and 3 miles. We said in the question that our ceiling is 500 feet, so it's below those mins. We could still use the procedure though, as long as we have the standard takeoff mins, which are one statute mile for single and twin engine aircraft. It's just that we would then need to use the 490 feet per nautical mile climb gradient as a minimum until reaching 3,700 feet. So that's what we'll plan for. Now, given that the winds are calm and temps and pressure are standard, and with an aircraft VY or best rate of climb at 120 knots, What's the minimum climb rate required to make that 490 foot per nautical mile gradient? 490 feet per minute, 450 feet per minute, 980 feet per minute, or 245 feet per minute? It's 980 feet per minute. It took some quick math, but hopefully easy math, as long as you knew the formula for converting feet per nautical mile to feet per minute. What we needed to do was take the gradient of 490 and multiply it by ratio of the aircraft ground speed, 120, and 60, which is 2. Multiplying like that gives us 980, the feet per minute we need to see on our VSI when we climb out. Next question. The departure end of runway 23 is at 1,974 feet elevation. When do you make the first turn after takeoff? When over the departure end of the runway, at 6,000 MSL, 2,374 MSL, or when instructed by ATC? The answer is 2,374 feet MSL. The departure procedure has us making a climbing left turn to heading 200 degrees. This first turn will be initiated at 400 feet above the elevation of the departure end of the runway, so it'll be at 2374 on the altimeter. Next, at what altitude can you transition from best rate of climb to a more favorable cruise climb speed? Assume ceilings are still at 500 feet. 4400 MSL, 3700 MSL, you can't, or 6000 MSL. We could change our climb rate once reaching 3,700 MSL. We're still using that requirement to take off minimums to maintain 490 feet per nautical mile until reaching 3,700 feet, at which point we could transition to another climb rate. For the final question, I might take some heat in the comments, but let's have a little fun with the numbers. The field elevation isn't listed in the procedure, but can we infer what that is using the information we're given? No, it's not listed. Yes, it's about 1800 MSL, it's 2600 MSL, or it's about 4400 MSL. From the plate, we might estimate the field elevation at 1800 MSL. We could do this by looking at the visual climb over airport VCOA information. The VCOA procedure has us climbing over the field in visual conditions until reaching 4400 MSL. The weather minimums involve a ceiling of at least 2,600 feet, that's an AGL. So in order to stay in visual conditions until 4,400 MSL, we need the clouds to be no lower than 2,600 AGL. If we subtract those two numbers, we see that the difference could be the field elevation, 1,800 feet. 
Now, that works out to be approximately correct here at Elkins, but don't try applying this as a general rule to every other airport you see. These numbers are rounded off and they're based on other assumptions besides just the bare minimum of the field elevation. Definitely stick to the official sources for elevation, but you can get a sense of how these numbers are being calculated by looking into them like this. How'd you do on this quiz? Let us know in the comments and check out all our training courses and more at the link here or in the description below.